Hey everyone, it's been a while, but with the whole uh, human malware issues going around, I've been stuck indoors. And luckily, right before this happened, I managed to run into two of the exact same computer. Oh, the 2007 iMac. Now the 2000 iMac, uh, 2007 iMac comes with a Core 2 Duo, and we're gonna be looking at one that has been upgraded to the max versus one that is pretty much stock, right? And we'll go through what different things you can expect from a performance standpoint, operating system that you can get to for each one of these with the upgrades and without the upgrades, considerations when actually buying different upgrades for these older iMacs, and then also what you could expect to pay for them, which considering that I think I paid a grand total of $10 for both of these, you shouldn't be paying much. Now I got a little bit lucky on both of them, but uh, if I can get lucky twice, I'm pretty sure that most people can get lucky at least once on one of these really inexpensive uh, Macs. So um, let's go ahead and start diving into it. The first step, I gotta get the non-upgraded iMac onto a later version of uh, Mac OS. So it was on Lion, I believe. Uh, and what I'm trying to do right now is get it to El Capitan, which... Okay. So I got both of the machines set up, ready to rock. Um, installing El Capitan was more difficult than I anticipated. Uh, first off, like I talked about, getting the right installer. Second piece was setting the correct date so that the installer would work. Somewhere in the time frame of 2016, I'll put that in the comments of this video so that you know what date to set within Terminal during the installation process so that it will actually successfully install. Otherwise, you get a lot of weird package installation errors, verification errors, uh, timeouts, long running one second left until completion. Uh, on top of that, three gigabytes of RAM, three gigabytes of RAM. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is sort of turn the camera around and we can look at a couple different applications loading, walk through a couple simple uh, benchmarks and see how the 2007 versus the 2007, both of which have the 2600 Pro from AMD, uh, both of which have three gigabytes of RAM, SSD and High Sierra, uh, out of the box uh, hard drive with um, uh, El Capitan. And then uh, I think everything else spec wise pretty similar. The T9300, a slightly newer processor that allows for High Sierra and the T7700, uh, which is the, the older processor here within the stock 2007 iMac. All right, let's go ahead and see how they perform. Now this isn't meant to be completely scientific. A lot of this is just sort of seeing what the pros and the cons are. So what I did was I actually installed Google Chrome in both of the different machines. Uh, you'll notice that startup time actually fairly fast between the two. Um, let's go ahead and navigate out to some you know, news site. And see how they perform when you're just clicking around on the internet, scrolling, and uh, what you'll probably find overall. These two from a ability to go out and one, leverage Chrome, browse the web, very, very similar. The, uh, you know, I always forget how little the operating system has changed, but you can see there's no huge difference here between the two machines, which is leveraging basic functionality. Go ahead and open up the app store as well. I think a lot of what you'll find is that the only limitations on the older uh, operating system are just gonna be Safari, for example, is outdated. Uh, strangely enough, the hard drive doesn't seem to impact the performance that much, which makes me believe that the CPU is gonna be a bigger bottleneck in this case, which the T9500 is the best you can do. And the thing with the T9500, it, it just costs a bit much for me to want to consider it in these uh, in these machines. So I think the key thing here is that for basic web browsing, what you're gonna find, they, they perform very similar, especially if you install Chrome on these machines and you mostly use it for Chrome, maybe some basic FaceTime. Um, 
these machines aren't going to be that different. Now, let's check a quick Geekbench score and see how the two processors fare out. So it looks like the newer version of Geekbench won't work. Uh, we've got a requirement here of Mac OS 10.13 or newer. Let's see if we can find an older version. So you can hear the overall, see the uh, overall specs of the two machines. Nothing to write home about. Let's go ahead and run these benchmarks. Um, looks like barely, barely faster for the T9300. Okay, so CPU performance isn't really that dramatically different. Standard web browsing isn't that dramatically different. Memory capacity is about the same. Uh, you know, that I would have thought the SSD would have been better, uh, but it doesn't seem to really impact much. Uh, we could talk about update, updating the video cards in these, but I don't think that's worth it as well. Um, so in the end, let's go ahead and think about some conclusions here. All right, so conclusion number one, uh, is it worth it to upgrade one of these? And I'll say, strangely enough, yes, uh, here's why. Okay, it's not worth it to upgrade the uh, hard drive. I learned that one by really wasting a lot of time tearing around the computer, but, when you're in the computer replacing the CPU, you can easily update the hard drive in one of these. Get an SSD. I don't see why not. They're just newer. There's gonna be some scenarios, I'm sure, if I run some more benchmarks, where we're gonna run into the SSD being an advantage. Memory, absolutely update. These things are horrible to work with with one gigabyte, and they won't even run El Capitan with less than two. So absolutely update the memory. Be careful with what you choose. Three gigabytes, uh, seems to work if you just get a random two gigabyte and put it in there with the original uh, if it has one gigabyte in it. So look out for that, of course. It's an inexpensive update. So inexpensive, we're gonna go with the T9300 chip. It's gonna cost you about $17 chip shipped from China. Uh, we're gonna go with a two gigabyte stick of DDR4 uh, laptops. Be sure to look through and make sure it's something that is slightly compatible with one of these. Um, I don't know if I'd go higher than that. Uh, and then you're going to also grab some sort of like 120 gigabyte SSD, maybe another 20 bucks. So out of pocket, you're looking at in the range of 40 to $50 to upgrade one of these. Uh, the advantage is, is the only advantage that I can think of, you get high Sierra. That's it. You get a newer version of an operating system, uh, one that still has you know, some, some newer security patches one that, uh, you know, in theory, will have more features and function on them. But the big thing being Safari will be updated. You're gonna have updated versions of the software that exists. So uh, is it necessarily worth it to go through all this effort? I don't know, I, you know, it's, it's not too hard. It's a fun little project. Um, it didn't make the machine suddenly act differently. It didn't feel different between these two. In fact, I think the color accuracy, if you can see that here, is actually better on the one that I haven't played around with at all. So I think it actually has a better screen, strangely enough. Um, it just, it, it, it's a little bit more blue versus the warmer of this one. And that was just the way that they were when I got them. So uh, overall, I'd say fun project, not necessarily gonna make it into a screen or of a machine, um, but you will get a updated version of the operating system that, uh, that comes with the Mac. Now, uh, the last piece on here, once again, Getting uh, High Sierra to work on one of these is actually easier than finding a valid version of, of uh, El Capitan that you can download off the internet. I think the other thing to note though is you're gonna need to use the DOS Dude Patcher for High Sierra in order to get uh, it installed on this machine, which adds an additional step, but it wasn't too difficult to get figured out. And you just go to uh, search on Google DOS Dude Patcher for High Sierra specifically and then use that process to basically um, work around the CPU limitation that High Sierra technically has in it. It doesn't apply to the T9300, but it does apply to the T7700 that's in the older machine here.
All right. So that is all the gotchas and caveats here. Don't expect a massive performance difference by swapping out any of the components within one of these older iMacs, but you can get to a newer version of the Mac operating system.